आई वर्क एज असिस्टम एडमिन दर सो माई टॉक विल बी ऑन रनिंग पपेट इन स्टैंड अलोन मोड और इन मास्टरलेस मोड बेसिकली विदउट द लाइक एजेंट सो विल टॉक अबाउट दैट इन इन दिस टॉक फॉर दर so let's just have an overview overview of what we'll be taking in the talk first thing is like general about configuration management or infrastructure as a code which has become very popular now and the general architecture of puppet and how puppet works in each stage then second thing is like general deployment architect- architectures versus the uh, stand alone or masterless mode and why the benefits of it then let's have a question and answer session and discussion after the day we go so there is anything in the middle you can so now like it has become like a buzzword to use infrastructure as a code so it's like this is a common thing that everybody says system admins are developers to only thing is we will write program in an ugly language like httpd.confer slapd.confer <laughs> so if So we can't we use the same principles that developers use for collaboration, coordination, and system administration. That's what the basic principle behind infrastructure as a code. So another thing is like how infrastructure will like infrastructure as a code can help you in scaling your infrastructure and like it makes your system structured and it's simple and it's easier to be understood by everybody. It's like it's better than an ad hoc system administration like you have a if some new guy comes into the team or any shuffling or anything happens it's easier to get used to it like before we used to look for a block for any setting up any systems or something like that now why look for a module in module for puppet module for so it becomes more of a documentation sooner than later so another thing is like now it has become very popular in recent years like it has st- it stall started with cf engine and it has become very popular in recent days thanks to puppet and chef even some people use cd is also which like it's basically it's your choice puppet or chef or cd is but what is more important is using configuration management or infrastructure as a code so so this is how us this is a uh, this is a simple principle like simple flow chart which explains the flow of a uh, um, flow of the puppet basically you have different manifest it's compiled and it's, it becomes a catalog and like uh, it starts all it, it all starts with a particular system state and the goal of the goal of applying your manifest is to take your system to another defined state so if there is anything like basically the thing is it shouldn't get stuck anywhere in the middle like a or b that is the basic principle of like how puppet applies so so these are like the different stages which happens in the puppet so it can be simplified into four things actually one is compilation another one is transportation another one is instantiation and another one is configuration so compilation is very simple it's like basically it just does a passing of your uh, uh, manifest and then like it uh, apply some logic and then it, it, it just converts into a uh, what do you call it into a, into objects which are to be transported uh, transported mostly they are yaml objects and they are transported into different things <coughs> in like uh, if you have a network setup this comes into the picture actually compilation like uh, and it's transported into the instantiation is basically conversion of this yaml uh, transported catalogs into some puppet objects which will be applied actually configuration is a step in which your uh, system is taken to a particular step okay so in a normal network setup what happens is compilation takes place in your puppet master actually okay and then like that it does the passing and then like uh, it, uh, it does the like, it, it it takes the variables and then like from the factor <coughs> or anything else and then it it makes into a workable catalog basically and then it's transported transportation phase is like what network phase basically in the network system and then this happens in the uh, uh, client side it's entirely in the client side because instantiation depends on like many details of the client such as like the mac address may be ip address or like uh, whatever uh, there are uh, so many facts you may have disk space in some things and like whatever it is like instantiation happens over there 
configuration also happens uh, in the client side only so it's like it configuration is nothing but using of the instantiated puppet objects to force the system to go to a defined uh, stage so these are all the uh, this is the general working of the system. so here you can yeah here you can see the general setup of the uh, same um, network setup this is a general deployment architecture how it works mostly so it's like agent runs and puppet daemon basically and then like it, you can run it in the cron or any kind of like any way that you wish and then it queries for the catalog request for the catalog so initially what happens is when it requests for a catalog you get the ssl certificates assigned and like this assumes that certificates are signed and everything happens so to start from the basic it's like this this uh, like this sensor certificate master sensor certificate once it's accepted it requests for the catalog receives the catalog here the compilation case, case happens and then like the yaml objects are transported and it comes to the catalog and from there the instantiation phase happens and then like uh, everything is ready to object apply object, puppet objects actually and then like what happens is like uh, uh, configuration phase runs so it just takes the query and then like it, uh, and then it enforces the desired state uh, on the client side so this is the basic network setup uh, in which puppet works so what what is the problem in this like yeah, the basic thing I, that i found difficult initially when i started learning was using ssl certificates like if you go into any you know, thing, uh, any irc uh, irc channel or puppet or something every day you will find at least 10 20 new guys asking about my like, my certificate is not signed so it's not like my catalog is not you will have very like we are missing uh, problems with the certificates or sometimes your host name may change like there are many missing many people like it's it's like it's not very comfortable for somebody to start off with like sometimes it happens like in many uh, I, i have not faced it but i have heard it from uh, like people on i they actually what problem they face is like some people who host it on certain cloud infra actually what are that like they don't have a defined host name in the beginning uh, actually like they don't define a host name in the beginning so it's like ssl set def- depends on host name you know, so that becomes a huge headache you know again you have to go there and do it it's not uh, another one major problem is that i i faced personally was webrick webrick is the default uh, rack server that comes with puppet so like intuitively i started using webrick in the beginning when i started so what problem was like it was fine and good initially when there was not much of a load so what happens later is like uh, what happens later when you have a big um, uh, a big manifest or some like where you may have some 100 alias ips in a system or you may have uh, what do you call it you may have some 50 60 clients or hundreds of clients requesting at the same time to the master in that cases webrick does not scale like it's a development web server so it's supposed to be used for development and i don't find a point in using it for the um, production use basically so webrick is ruled out another one is uh, other popular way of scaling puppet generally that people use is using passenger mongrel or unicorn or any like enterprise level stack server so the problem with this is like it works it works very well but the problem is like there are many problems with the passenger the version of the like there are like many tricky problems with passenger unicorn i don't find it simple personally it's like it's it's not complex but it's not trivial it's like if somebody comes in and then like the point that i stressed in the beginning for like using infrastructure as a code is if somebody new comes into my uh, like comes into my team he should be able to get into the like get into the role quickly like he should I, i should not basically have much time in like uh, using all those things like explaining if my explaining my setup itself takes a lot of time it will take a lot of time to get into actual work so it's like to un- uh, it's not like everybody's choice as running passenger mongrel or unicorn so again this is another the major problem that we face personally in our deployment is using remote data center third party firewall and third party networks like 
what happens is like some of our servers are hosted in like uh, in data centers owned by uh, like not so they have a firewall they own firewall so and it's like it's difficult to open port 8140 like uh, the puppet deep port uh, uh, like to open the uh, like port switch we don't need but it's like using ssh was simpler for us like it, it fits in the picture simply like otherwise there's a, the firewall and the thing is a huge problem having it in a remote place and using different ports so so what we did was using puppet in a standalone mode like what happens is puppet comes with a default compiler basically that compiler is the one which does the basic task of like as i explained in the beginning in the previous slides compiling and then like making into instantiation like and then running so what we can do is like basic thing is you interpret the things with the puppet compiler and then you run the things on your client server, client server itself like eliminate client server architecture use it as a use it as a use it just like using your code or something so it's like you can use puppet apply then there is one thing like module path is there so if you specify the module path you can basically use everything that you do in the uh, normal network setup so when the basically all the three phases of the thing that i explained happens in the client side so there is no server in the picture there is no uh, master so and like thing is the like custom facts and functions also work the same way as the network setup there is no like there is no big difference there are only very small differences that you will see another one thing is like you may miss uh, certain things in the running in a master mode like you can manage whatever you miss like by the ability to push the configuration or like something do that using a, your version control server like we use git for it basically we preferred it because it was simpler to install and ready to go so it's like we share a um, puppet code among the person uh among the people using and we use access control methods like we use gito lite for access controlling like we have connected it to our uh, directory server and then we manage access control like that so it's like what is the benefit of having version control in the infrastructure i mean in, in uh, like uh, opening like having version control system is a very good thing okay for the code so what how does it benefit for the Uh, system admins so basically as i said as i told you before like there is no big difference between system administration and development so it's like we can use whatever we need from their side like whatever is a good thing from their side this is a very good thing in version control system using that like one thing is you have uh, like easier ways to document changes is to use the commit messages so you use proper commit messages so you can get a overview of what all changes has been done like again as i said it's easier for the new guy coming in to uh, grab a picture by seeing the git logs you can see what all changes have happened like and why it's done with okay. a simple way of doing it. and another one is you can collaborate and develop your intro among your uh, colleagues in an easier way actually instead of like um, going a uh, like instead of getting into a campaign session or doing anything like that it's easier to share your uh, uh, puppet code via an version control system so and then like another thing is like uh, you can use your hooks to manage a lot of things basically so uh, like uh, you have post receive hooks basically for the uh, uh, you have your post receive hooks in git so what we do is in, uh, we use our post receive hooks to like we have a central git server and we, we can use your post receive hook to push that to the client machine and post receive hooks can be also used for uh, uh, post receive hooks can be used for uh, control running your puppet also applying your puppet manifest as i said like to compile it you can just say puppet, puppet apply module path in your uh, you can do it in your other thing so how do we start off with it to boost up boost up the machine like use git plus ssh 
the simplest way to deploy git and git code and the one bootstrap pu puppet via a simple like script uh, where you can just install puppet and like you can you know, run over it then like you can write a simple recipe to install git and ssh keys via puppet it should be it's a fairly simple simpler way of doing it basically installing ssh keys and like so the use is like you can even define and repository you can bootstrap and repository and then you can like uh, access, you can define your access control everything into the client via puppet like via applying it for the first time so that is the first time when you do it so next time you can use like and then you can define your custom post receive hooks hooks are like hooks play a major role in our uh, uh, infrastructure management like so it's like you can have hooks to how like uh, hooks can see the refs actually the reference of the git commit so what it can do is you can see if it talks to a particular uh, a particular branch so you can have a testing branch and then if it's a testing branch you can push it to a particular test machine or anything like that and then like you can write your custom host receive hooks to handle the i mean ha handle your workflow basically so you get what we basically do is you, uh, you can define a workflow and then you can use git to do, do that workflow and puppet can just be an uh, what do you call it? it just works like compiling the code like 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 you run normal scripts it, it can uh, become like that so so what are all the other uh, i mean what are all the advantages basically in uh, this thing Uh, in running in standalone mode, basically, then we will come to the disadvantage. First advantage is master is like puppet master has a like what do you call it? It's a little bit difficult to set up and like it's difficult to start off actually. Even if you see a uh, beginner tutorial, they teach you with starting with uh, running it in a standalone mode only. Like, but it's very basic again. It, and like with the help of git and uh, other version control system you can pretty much do whatever you can do with uh, your normal set, uh, normal network setup basically so it's like it's faster and it's better to use using git plus so disadvantages it's like you don't get uh, stored configuration does not work properly stored stored config does not work properly uh, master less knowledge and as of now puppet db does not work as of now so it's like they have file and ticket or getting puppet db to work with standalone mode so hopefully in the future version we will get something like that. and another thing is collecting facts from the nodes like you may run something like a dashboard or something like that so getting facts from the client nodes to uh, use it in your dashboard or something it can be a bit hacky actually you will need to uh, use a, use your post receive hooks custom script or something like that to get your or any script, basically you can make use your own uh, you, you can use your own manifest you can have one of the class puppet classes which works on taking the facts from the client and then passing it to the uh, server which has the dashboard basically another one is collecting reports from the nodes these are like what it does is when you run in a standalone mode it logs it to a directory basically i mean report directory whatever you specify you can't send it to a report server so you need to figure out your own means of uh, uh, using it uh, like using your reports reports are pretty much useful you may want to see a dashboard or you may use foreman or uh, anything like that so for the things it, it it can be a bit like uh, tricky one thing to think about it another another one thing is catalog transportation this is a major disadvantage that everybody uh, comes up actually what happens is like in the standalone mode you put your entire code on the client actually so it's like if you have different systems in which you don't want one system to know about what the other system does then it becomes a bit of a problem because like you have the same thing like same code in all the system so it's like your client basically has too much of information so in that cases it becomes a huge problem so that is that is one of the but if you have like uh, if you have similar systems or like if you have similar servers or uh, if you run like what i said is like basically what i wanted to stress on is using configuration management for standalone system i mean for single system zero plus system basically one or two systems in that cases you may you may not mind having the entire code in the system so it's like sometimes you may have 
so so sometimes you may have only one system basically like and like you may ask what is the advantage of using uh, puppet for a single system like we manage lot of single servers as a service provider basically so it's like there are like one thing is you have a uh, configurations are like version control so and other thing is what puppet basically promises is to you define states like state transformation is defined actually it's like uh, you go from a to b or like b to c there is nothing in the middle so you can have a complete record of the states so that is what you may want in your system you may want some time to go back from b to a like those things can be easier when you have uh, uh, a configuration management system not necessarily puppet basically in any configuration management system and the other thing is like if you want to uh, like we do a lot of migrations or like sometimes you may want to upgrade your hardware like the things that you have with the single server administration basically so for that cases it's very useful to have uh, uh, this kind of thing because like you just clone the repository you will have your own copy of it you just like start bootstrap the initial step and you push it and like everything gets configured so it becomes simpler basically so migrations get easier and you have different systems so this is the main use of having it for single system and other one is when scaling like you may have one system and then you may want to expand it like you may want to have a backup uh, machine like for those things it's easier to have uh, like further plans is like like whatever what what else can you do with what for, like how further are you planning to go with it is to use like different post processing hooks basically like to use the branching intelligently you can use uh, you can have some branch called test branch and then like if you if the ref is like if uh, you can check the refs and if it's committed to that particular ref then you can basically uh, run an aspect or like you can automate so much things actually other other one that we have been looking for like we have been testing so far is using jenkins uh, jenkins like makes the job very easy actually instead of having like we are having instead of having a central uh, server just for having your hosting your repository or something you can have a ci engine like jenkins so it can do so many things it can like even bootstrap and vm and then like you can run your tests in and vm like and you can do so much like then integrate with uh, few what or like you can basically do pretty much a lot of things with jenkins so it again becomes like deployment like uh, what do you call it configuring something into the server also should be like deploying your code so jenkins also will be helpful in that case and then like with jenkins you can run checks uh, like using puppet as with a puppet lint puppet lint is basically to uh, see if the syntax and like the style proper styling is maintained in your code so you can use it so the bottom line of using standalone mode is like it's the simplest way of using puppet like um, the motto of using configuration management should be to get going like it's like uh, you don't have to worry so much about setting up your puppet and managing your puppet it's already when you are managing so much stuff with your uh, uh, with your puppet like you should not spend more time on managing your puppet server basically it, it does not make any sense other one is it's suited for uh, service based business models where you handle like uh, clients where you use uh, uh, where you run your uh, where you manage your clients or where your machines are not yours and where your machines may be in some remote locations it may be in some remote data centers it may be in some private network protected by this thing then other one is like since it's simple way and easier to start a uh, easier to start off with the thing it gives you more time to concentrate on modules and develop your own modules or edit your uh, modules and like use use modules in a better way like it gives more time to do the actual work than setting up uh, so this is my id so if you have anything you can contact me through this you can find me in the same puppet or intra tech uh, ias channels with nitish sadguru underscore underscore so you can find me over there and like any question like or anything that you found, found that you can really like anything that i missed out or anything that you want to hear from the uh, masterless setup
anybody's experience which you had like when you had some trouble in using uh, network setup it's like i'll be happy to hear from you it's like happy to do yeah you can have dashboard there is a dashboard like so you mean uh, so you was you basically want to know you basically want to know the uh, so like tools which you used to monitor your puppet runs correct so like you can monitor it using foreman foreman is one tool another one is puppet dashboard puppet dashboard is supported by like it's done by the puppet labs company itself so other one is uh, if you want to play well with your existing infrastructure you may think of using your reports in a more like uh, in the way it suits you it's basically an yaml file so passing an yaml file writing a script to pass an yaml file is not very difficult so what you can do is you can pass your yeah, report like um, i i'll tell you what we do actually so like we did not want to use the dashboard dashboard was like it, it dashboard itself is another resource hub basically like what i felt personally so what do we, what we do is like we have an script to uh, running in each of the client actually what it does is it passes my yaml report and then like it pushes into a, like it, it converts it into a json format i take the things that i want and then i push it into a json format and then like i push it into a stomp server basically like and then the message queue server like it can take the thing and then you can like you can basically use something like graphite basically so graphite is like any input that you give you can make a graph out of it so you can count the number of runs and failures you can push it to a message queue and then like you can basically run uh, like you can run your graph according to that you can use that script uh, like you can use that script to get into a message queue right so you can use design the message queue such that it pushes to some of your existing you may have zabbix already running you may have cacti already running so you may you may push into zabbix alert or you may push it into negios so uh, like you, you may have some workflow tools such as request tracker or anything running on it so you, whatever information you need you can frame from the report and push it into that so it's basically dashboard or your own tool like or foreman if you want to you want an advanced thing. anything else so sync the server in correct correct yeah correct no that's why the basic thing i said to have in the client uh, like you want to know a way to basically run your uh, clients uh, in case the master server has any problem correct with the gems or anything like that so basically the way is to run it using uh, transport it using ssh git server can do the transportation for you basically from your uh, uh, like you can use an post receive hook so that like you can say that if you push it into a particular branch then like uh, you can check the refs and then you can use it you can say a git push to a particular server uh, so there you may have the normal puppet or like there you may have one repository running like client side repository so the client side repository receives the code puppet code and then there you can just do a normal puppet apply like in your post receive hook so it's automated like that it's not dependent on a single master is actually not a master it's just a repository in like this and so you won't have a problem of crashing gems uh, like with the master side like it's only a single thing which happens for the most of the time one thing is like but puppet is basically dependent on many ruby gems actually so puppet itself is available as a gem so you can't avoid uh, using ruby so if you want to avoid ruby and you you can go for some simple configuration management tools like cd stars and things like that so, uh, it's like but they have their own limitations cd stars is basically too much dependent on ssh like here you have an option to go for an ssh based stand alone module as you to go for a network setup but that cd stars is more dependent on ssh and also cd stars like it, it has very limited functions 
and a limited uh, and not a relatively a smaller community which uses cds so it's like it's better to use uh, like uh, tool which is used by the majority of people you will get so much modules in your module folder so it simplifies the task you will get so much help and like it's better to go for that if you want to avoid ruby gems you can't uh, use puppet basically you just like uh, puppet itself is written in ruby only it just now there is an dsl which has come for writing in ruby also so you can if you are comfortable with that you can use that anything any other problem that you faced with the network setup or like you know, would not like to see in the future so i think you have faced more problems with the contact for example <laughs> you know doctor facts yeah uh, facts you want to know how to collect facts from the client you know? okay so you it's a very simple part of the uh-huh. but then you say you facts actually yeah yeah the facts is also the machine so you want to talk about facts yeah i'll tell you how to use facts in a standalone basically custom functions basically like uh huh how to build a module like basically like uh, i'll start off with uh, uh, st- factor okay so basically what is a factor factor is something which gives facts about the systems there may be so many facts about the systems like uh, the your ip address your mac address uptime uh, distribution name uh, your operating system version you know, like so many facts can be there about the system so facts is like factor is basically a tool to get you that facts it's very simple to uh, uh, write a f- custom fact basically so what do you do in like simplest way to write a fact is you can write an uh, you can write an own shell script or shell wrapper and then you can export an environmental variable with saying factor underscore so then if you say facts that you will get that tool so if you want to get the facts in the standard in the stand alone mode also facts work in the similar way like i like i said facts are useful in the instantiation phase so instantiation phase what happens is like uh, basically in the in the instantiation phase like the facts are got like facts are basically variables so that facts are used to p- build the puppet objects correct so in, like since the instantiation phase happens in the client itself and facts are more tied to the client so it's like like you will use facts basically in the same way you use in the master setup like there is not much of a difference basically between using it in the uh, network setup and using it in the client setup. and that, next one is cu- custom functions so like i will okay. yeah it's like the uh, custom functions are same everywhere basically it's like you build a module and it's just a part of the module okay because i don't want that to run at the client no it's like uh-huh. no th- those things become facts actually if you want to fetch some information uh, say for example i need to check the file present in the server mm mm-hmm. mhm and if you call in the server and i want to get the file present in the server mhm if it is present don't do that anything in the file mhm if it is not present then copy uh basically you can use exec exec will protect the client so you, like uh, you want to use it in the, you are talking about the network setup correct so my thing is pretty simple say okay. open master okay and i need to write a then like basically what you can do is it, this cannot be handled in, in the stand alone mode by uh, your custom functions basically what you can do is you can use facts you can use your own fact to check if it's there in the uh, custom location okay and then you can use something called mc you should be using mc marionette collective basically 
So there is one plugin called MC Fax. Ah, MC Fax. So what MC Fax does is you can get fax from your remote machines. Um, basically, like you can get to, you can get the fax from from the remote machine. So what you can do is you can get the fax from your remote machine, and then like it again becomes a variable, right? In your uh, manifest. So you can use it in your manifest, like make it make it as a condition, and then like you can use it in the normal class itself. Like what I am saying is for your need, like there is no need to go for a custom function. Custom function is needed when you go for something completely new. Like uh, there is no proper module for uh, uh, running a Git repository as of now. So let's say we make one thing for uh, running Git or something like that. So custom function will be some function which handles your push and like. Uh, Add so those things like which uh, like uh, which gives that things keywords will be they will be the custom function. Like what is your need is like you need to use facts, paste the fact into your uh, uh, master, check for the facts in your class. Like if else, uh, like what do you call it? It's it's basically have a conditional and according to the conditional go for the uh, uh, apply it on. Okay, we'll talk about that. Okay, you want to see if that was not in that CSG? basically so first thing that you can go for is looking for your the first thing that you can go is looking for your modules like you just decide what all are the things which should be there then you look for the modules you can find it in module 4 or anything like that basically 
so the second thing is like uh, you may want to write like there are different style guides actually like yours is a pretty detailed question so we'll, uh, so there are separate uh, style guides how to design your module so basically you have to keep your modules like that you have uh, like write other most many modules as you want like one for the web server like one for the uh, database server or like each thing one for the mail server basically okay and then like you may want to write classes which uses the mandan like you you make something called notes.ppp file notes.ppp is something which defines about your notes so you can use your note config in that uh, uh, like you can like you will have many note cl uh, clients in your data center right you can have them in it like, so it's basically like it's, it's a pretty detailed thing you can come and talk to people in this thing uh, uh, hash for but i as a channel uh, like you can contact me in this info we we'll need some time to do this so it Yeah, right. You need to like uh, first like decide how your configuration is going to work. Then like you can go for the management. Yeah. So we will have it. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we will close the session. We will uh, discuss it outside. Okay. Thanks a lot.